I want to give a couple of jargon explainers. In the previous podcast where I chatted with Ranga, there were a couple of terms that came up. One was something called vendor lock-in. The other was something called multi-cloud. I want to explain that a little bit in case you're a little confused about it or you don't fully understand what that means. Also, multi-cloud is something that is a little misunderstood. I want to clarify that as well. So vendor lock-in is fairly simple. You work with a vendor to deploy a service or to build a service, to build any application. You want to make sure that you're as decoupled from that vendor as possible. You don't want to tie yourself to that vendor because who knows what happens to that vendor later, right? The vendor might go bankrupt. The vendor might hate you and say, okay, this particular company is not going to deploy on my, on my service. As unlikely as these scenarios are, especially when we're talking about these big cloud providers, it is a bit of a risk when you're kind of tying yourself to a certain vendor. So for example, you build a web application where you're using DynamoDB, 10-year birthday, DynamoDB as your database, okay? DynamoDB has been around for 10 years. It's probably not going to go anywhere in the next three years. But for some reason, you cannot work with Amazon anymore. You cannot work with AWS anymore. Some legal complication or whatever, right? It's just, just some hypothetical situation. Now, what do you do? Since you have written code, you have your architecture that is tied to DynamoDB, you can't remove it, right? You can't just over, you can't refactor all your code overnight. So you are coupled to the vendor. This is what's referred to as vendor lock-in. Vendor lock-in has always been a problem, right? Even before uh, the cloud became a thing, uh, vendor lock-in was related to the application servers that you built in. And that was kind of the reason why Java EE came about. There are specifications so that as long as you built with the specifications, you can kind of move across uh, different uh, server vendors. But with Cloud, you don't have, well, you kind of have it, but not as much, right? It's, you're still, people are still okay with locking yourself to a vendor, all right? Which is the reason why there is, there are a few companies, really big companies, not everybody can afford to do this. There are really big companies who do something called multi-cloud. The idea behind multi-cloud is you build an application that is not locked to a certain vendor that could potentially be deployed in multiple vendors, right? You can you build your architecture and say, you can say I'm, I'm okay deploying it on Azure. I'm okay deploying it on AWS. There's not a lot of changes involved. I can basically just take that app and deploy it to a different cloud. I My application architecture is not aware of specific services and specific offerings of a certain vendor, okay? So this is what's referred to as multi-cloud, okay? Multi-cloud architecture is where you're architecting in such a way that you can deploy to multiple clouds. Okay, this is different from another terminology called polycloud. Okay, so this is a distinction that uh, the company ThoughtWorks have published, uh, you know, some stuff on. So what they say as polycloud is when you have an organization that kind of takes the best solution for their problems from different clouds. Okay, and uh, in the previous podcast, Ranga does mention this. So for example. Uh, GCP is the chosen cloud provider for AI workloads, right? You're doing something AI, people normally tend to go GCP, okay? So GCP is the preferred choice for certain uh, workloads. Similarly, AWS could be a preferred choice for certain workloads. So in this case, what you're doing is you're building an architecture where you're saying, okay, this part, well, this cloud provider is strong, so I'm going to put it there. This other part, this other cloud provider is strong, I'm gonna put it there and so on. So you're kind of picking and choosing the cloud provider for your solutions. This is not multi-cloud because each solution could be tied to the cloud provider, right? You're building AI, it could be tied to the GCP offerings and it wouldn't, may not be easy for you to say, well, I picked AI earlier, I'm going to shift it to Azure because I don't like GCP, right? That's not possible if you are aware, like if your architecture is aware of the cloud. So in this case, in the polycloud case, you still have an architecture where multiple clouds are involved, multiple cloud providers are involved, but they're not cloud agnostic. They're not, they're aware of the cloud, so you can't just move it. You're still tied to the cloud. You still have vendor lock-in. So that's an important distinction to make. It's just something to keep in mind when you're uh, thinking about these architectures. Multi-cloud is where you can, you, you can be like, hey, I don't care if this cloud goes under. I'm going to go shift to another cloud provider, right? You can move and shift around and all that. You're not tied. You're not, you don't have vendor lock-in. Whereas polycloud, 
is where you have an architecture where multiple clouds are involved, but there could still be vendor lock-in in each of those interactions with the cloud, okay? Multi-cloud uh, is something that is not very common because it is very, very expensive to do multi-cloud. It is easier and cheaper to go with vendor lock-in and say, well, I don't care if this cloud provider goes under, I, I will be able to shift to something else and you know, just do refactoring, whatever is necessary at the time, rather than starting at the outset and saying, I'm gonna have to put these extra layers and extra precautions to make sure that this thing works in every cloud provider. It's very, very expensive. And only large companies and companies that have the, really have the need for like, okay, I wanna be completely decoupled. The risk is too high if I'm attached to a single cloud. Only those kind of companies do multi-cloud. It's not common, okay? So just something to keep in mind. 